I'm Brent Weaver, and you're watching YouGurus, the must-watch web series to become a more profitable and in-demand web professional. Today, I'm in Boulder, Colorado with Tyson Brawley at Guzmo. Welcome to the program. Thanks. Thank you. So, Tyson, what makes Guzmo unique? What makes us unique? Um, I would say, you know, our passion behind it. We have a lot of drive that, you know, basically we just inject into all of our projects. Um, we, we treat this as like a relationship with our clients. Uh, we, we, we tell every client that we going into any project that we want to be their web partner, their web, you know, go to to everything, but be part of their goals, be part of their passion. Um, and with that, you know, we, you know, we put that into the work we do for them. So we treat everything as ongoing, like an ongoing relationship with all of our clients. And, and with that, I think, you know, we, we find that to be unique with us um, and, and how we approach it. So does ongoing mean that you have some kind of recurring relationship with your customers? Yes. Um, we have uh, an ongoing support plan, I guess you could call it, um, where uh, it's it basically it extends to uh, anything from just general questions, you know, consulting, um, new ideas, uh, you know, help with their websites, in, you know, particularly like a content management system, like WordPress, um, Joomla, any of those a applications. Uh, we're just there on call, so to speak, that they can, you know, uh, kind of pick our brain or just ask us anything. And that's, you know, that is recurring. Um, and that's just kind of the extent to our relationship with them. So give me an idea of the scope of Guzmo. How many clients do you guys currently have? Um, right now we're supporting between 450 and 500 clients um, across uh, multiple different platforms. Uh, some are you know, even uh, websites or uh, even services that are not technically like on a platform, but we're supporting them in terms of search engine optimization, um, campaigns such as you know social media, um, possibly blog writing, um, even just graphic design. You know, they, they'll just come to us on a recurring basis um, and we'll perform, you know, graphic changes or even print material and that kind of stuff. So when did Guzmo start? Um, we started in 2000, uh, January 2000. Um, in the beginning, we were, uh, you know, literally working out of a garage. So, so 2000, that's 14 years ago. So yes. You guys have been around for a little while. We have, yep, yep. So, we've, you know, weathered all the changes and seen the industry completely shift in that amount of time, but... Uh, we, we see ourselves getting more professional around 2005. We thought, you know, we probably should put together a business plan <laughs> um, and move out of a garage and become more, you know, professional to Garages our clients. Garages can be hip. Thank you. Well, not this garage. <laughs> um, Did so, cars park in the garage? No. Okay. No. But it was, yeah, it was definitely not hip. <laughs> but um, we... Uh, yeah, so we kind of hunkered down and we uh, put together a business plan. We got really involved with uh, like the chamber of commerce in the area and uh, you know business resources, um, and finally uh, got ourselves some, some small office space so we can have you know a nice place you know for clients to meet. Uh, we were doing the coffee shop thing for a while, which is not bad, but you know we thought it was time to you know have a home base, um, and then everything kind of just went from there. So when you started Guzmo, was it kind of a freelance thing or did you start it with the intent to have a business? In the beginning, it was actually just right out of the gate was an intent to have a business. Um, our business model was completely different from what it is today. Um, back in the day when we started, the idea was to custom develop our own content management system. Even before the word content management system, I don't think even existed. <laughs> and uh, create an easy to use platform that was actually flash based, so it's kind of dating <laughs> way back in the day, that uh, clients could easily manage their website. You know, they make the changes, they update it, and, uh, and actually kind of do it yourself kind of model. Is this system still in play today? Are you guys still using your own CMS? Yes. So the system is uh, definitely in use today. Uh, we build uh, our you know, web projects still on it, not all of our web projects on it, but uh, it has uh, evolved, of course, over the years. I mean, it's completely different, you know, from where it was, and it's a lot more powerful than what it was. But yes, it's definitely still active. In terms of like lessons learned with that, because I think, every, or at least a lot of web companies kind of have the T-shirt that says yeah. like, "I built a CMS," right? Right. So like, you guys are still actively using your own CMS. What mm -hmm. lessons have you learned in offering that kind of product to your customer base? Um, I mean, 
you know, that's a good question. A, a bunch of lessons uh, from, you know, I think the, ver the, the first one we learned was having that our primary business model. Um, our goal was to just, you know, have everyone, you know, build their website and we would, you know, benefit from the recurring fees. And the lesson there that we learned, you know, fairly quickly was that, you know, a website, you know, is very vital to, you know, businesses in all types of sizes. Um, and, you know, although there is still today the do-it-yourself model, which, you know, is very strong, um, it was kind of conflicting with our values and our mission statement, which was to be that, again, going back, you know, to being, you know, the web partner. And us, them doing it themselves, is just, I mean, it just wasn't working. So we ended up started, you know, offering design services. So doing the web design, and that quickly evolved, and that ended up becoming our primary business. And um, that, you know, it was interesting, because, I mean, we had, I mean, whole model planned out, and it completely changed. Another lesson um, was the type of support to be offered. You know, I mean, you have all different types of levels of technical support, and you know, you've heard you've heard the horror stories, and and uh, and it's a little bit you know different, especially with websites because there's so many pieces, and we're dealing with a technology that still a lot of people are not familiar with. I mean, HTML. I mean, we still have clients today that are scared of it, and uh, and they you know so supporting that was interesting. It was a learning experience, and we had to kind of shift the way we did that to kind of. Uh, you know, one, make it, uh, you know, somewhat manageable <laughs> in terms of being interesting, but uh, effective because these businesses need to be focusing on what they do best, which is running their business rather than worrying about putting in a link on their website. So we had to, you know, extend that, uh, our, our support where, you know, instead of just, you know, throwing them some video tutorials to figure out how to do it, you know, we actually kind of either do it for them or walk them through it. Now, a lot of web pros are, seeking this whole recurring revenue mm -hmm. treasure chest, right? right? Like they're trying to figure out how to create recurring support plans, hosting revenue, et cetera. It sounds like you guys have kind of figured out a way to do that. What percentage of your revenue today would you say is recurring revenue? Oh. And I'm not going to hold you this number. Okay. I'm going to do an audit <laughs> or something, you know? Um, that's a good question. It's, I mean, it's about, I would say, just a little under a quarter. Okay. Um, which... Is it, so yeah, I mean it's not a, a huge part of our revenue, um, but you know obviously it's important. Um, and again, a complete different because our whole goal was to have that like 100% of our revenue. And but again, I don't think I don't think that'll ever happen. Sure, I mean cash is cash. It's nice to have mm -hmm. different types of revenue coming in, so right, that's yeah, good. Yeah. So in terms of uh, your kind of ideal customer, mm -hmm. who's who's the type of customer that is good for Guzmo? Um, you know, I mean, small businesses is what we focus on, uh, from sole proprietors to, you know, you know, fairly larger small businesses, like, you know, like small hotels. Um, we don't, you know, our target, our target audience would not necessarily be big business, um, just based off, you know, what, what we what focus on. But yeah, I mean, from, you know, again, like artists, single artists, or, you know, li you know like life coaches to, you know, small retail shops. And even hotels, is, yeah, that's what we focus on. In, in getting 500 customers, what's been the one like trick that you've learned to, to grow a customer base in terms of like marketing or strategic partnerships? How have you gotten 500 clients? Um, well, I mean, focusing I think on our quality again, going back into that whole our whole ideal of being you know uh, again their web partner or generating that relationship, word of mouth, and of course sparks from that. Um, so that's one part we've we have actually partnered up with other companies that are good complementary companies, you know, uh, you know, services that can complement uh, what we do, or uh, just even you know, just within you know other industries that you know can refer business to us um, is the two, and then just being involved again with networking. Uh, definitely getting involved with the chambers in this local area. Um, we we have tapped in some other chambers outside of Colorado too. But and can you give me a little bit more specifics on what getting involved in a chamber means? Yeah, um, you know, just taking advantage of their resources. I mean, anybody can join a chamber, but really, you're going to only benefit from it as if you actually take advantage of what they're offering and and utilize it. So we did that right out. You know, when we you know first started back, you know, when I was mentioned, you know, back in 2005 is. We took advantage of all of their networking meetings and we tapped into like the small business development center, um, you know, 
learning about all aspects of the business more than just, you know, learn about websites, but uh, like just operational stuff, you know, and that generated conversations, which those conversations, you know, to our surprise, were actually really relevant to, you know, our business and people looking for our services and then them knowing, and it was actually really interesting. Um, and, and that kind of just spread like wildfire. So do you guys ever go in and like teach classes at the chamber or is it just attend mm -hmm. events and networking? Yeah. So, you know, after we were involved for a while, we actually did start teaching classes, uh, with, uh, the chamber, um, like basically kind of like web 101 or just kind of getting, you know, uh, how to get on the web the easiest. Um, we did actually then pick up a class with a, uh, a firm or a company here that does kind of educational stuff in Boulder um, for uh, Google AdWords, actually, like how to run an effective campaign. So yeah, we kind of ventured into that a little bit. And that was, you know, it was, it was fun. It was interesting. You know, it, it was fun to see people get excited about something that, you know, most people probably w wouldn't. <laughs> but it was, it was just, that just makes us, you know, more excited to do our job. Sure. And I saw, I think I saw a 40 under 40 uh, placard in the other room. So what practices have you done that have gotten you to where you are today that you can, you know, achieve awards like that? You know, I mean, I think staying true to everything that, you know, all, staying true to our values, I guess is the first one. Um, passion, again, going back to that and ambition. Um, uh, just always always striving to deliver the best service or even product to you know your customer um and getting them excited for what you do i think you know that you know being happy you know spreads and uh and and i've always held true to that you know I've, every day every time i'm coming to work you know it's it's a new day and it's always exciting even though maybe it's not <laughs> <laughs> um and i think you know i mean and I've done that forever, you know, and I love what I do. And I think that must have shown and, you know, and, and that was based on nomination and it was, you know, really exciting. Very cool. Over 14 years mm -hmm. as a business, has there been any dark time moment? Some, some time where it was like, maybe we'll just fold this thing up and walk away. You know, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, that's, a, you know, it's a lot of years. Uh, we definitely experienced, um, like most businesses, you know, the economy, and I can say that's maybe it was a dark time. We definitely, that definitely hit us. Um, I would say that specifically, it was really hard to see us shrink, lose, you know, team members of ours that were just, you know, we absolutely loved and, we, you know, and it was very difficult to go through. But unfortunately, you know, we kind of had to, to do that. So that was, I always, and it's funny that you mentioned dark times because we do call, we call it the Guzmo dark ages <laughs> <laughs> during that time. And, and it was, you know, it's, it's never fun to see that happen. Um, but you know, it, it, of course, you know, you have to think of the company. I mean, it's always hard to say again when, when you're dealing with people, but, um, that was, you know, uh, very hard to weather that. Um, and honestly, the shift, we've seen this industry kind of shift from 14 years ago when we kind of, we kind of the web industry was kind of nestling in, in like the IT realm where, you know, if someone thought you knew computers, you knew how to build a website and also set up your home wireless network. Um, and we still get questions from clients to help them do. with their home wireless network. And we've seen that transition where now, I mean, and I mean, the web industry, I mean, we're now, I mean, we're in marketing. I mean, it's like a different world and seeing that. And that was, I wouldn't say that was a dark period, but I mean, that transition was, was interesting. It was, we had to kind of like learn and evolve with that. Um, and honestly, kind of around the time when the economy was kind of shaky. So that whole era was, yeah. Um, you know, another thing too, I mean, in terms of just in the business, I mean, we, we had to change kind of our management structure, um, just, you know, evolving, you know, with having multiple owners and that had to dissipate and change. And, you know, and that was difficult too. Just any kind of changes like that, you know, is stuff that we have to weather. So, so you guys had, you had another partner at Guzmo mm -hmm. and now you don't. Right. Was right. there any specific catalyst? Like they wanted to go off and start surfing for the rest of their life <laughs> or was there, you know, just dis disagreements or? You know, I, I think it was, um, it comes back to passion and ambition. Uh, you know, where I felt I had, I had that and my business partner at the time didn't, you know, and that's fine. You know, it, the, you know, the, I guess the, the breaking up was, um, was amicable. It was fine. It was, you know, nothing negative, but I mean, it was, even though it was a hard transition, it was, you know, a good transition. Um, 
you know, I, and do I look back and say, you know, should I, do I regret ever bringing on a business partner? Um, you know, I don't regret it because I wouldn't have known, I think, <laughs> what I would, what, what I was in for, you know, with that. Um, however, you know, when seeking, I think now, I mean, if I, you know, if I knew what I knew back then, I mean, seeking a business partner has got to be one of the most difficult things. I mean, uh, of course, there's a lot of unknowns going into it. There's always that risk, um, you know, but there are flags that you can kind of hone in on, I think, that if I had known what those flags are, because people, have, many people have gone through business partner relationships and they've you know, gone sour. And I wish I would have known that then because I would have seen those flags, I think. Um, but it was hard. It was hard because, you know, working with uh, my business partner, I mean, it, it was always, you know, kind of a duo. And then all of a sudden I felt like I was completely on my own <laughs> when it happened. And so it was kind of frightening, I have to say, for like the first six months. But uh, it was it was definitely yeah, worth it. What are you best at? Um, I would say I, uh, I think communicating what we do and getting folks excited about it. Um, I love talking about it. You know, I mean, sometimes, you know, we'll, I'll go into a, a strategy meeting and it might go way too long than it should. Because... <laughs> I love, I love it. I love talking to business owners and talking about their business and, and brainstorming, you know, and, and, uh, and I tend to in meetings switch to the, you know, I start saying like we as I'm, I, like, as I'm part of the company. And I love that. I love, you know, uh, hearing about what they want to do and, and then, you know, sharing my ideas as, a, as if I'm like, I'm part of their team. And, and, you know, and I hear feedback from that, but um, I think I do that well. And I mean, again, I think the reason why is because I, you know, it's, I love it. I'm always thinking about other people's businesses um, and what they could do or showing them what they could do and getting them excited for something that they might not necessarily want to do, like a website or something or web marketing, you know, where they feel like it's a burden sometimes, which is, you know, hard to hear sometimes. But I love always at the end of the meeting, they're like, they're ready to go for it and they're excited about it. So I think I communicate that well. So 14 years of Guzmo, mm -hmm. what have you learned over that period of time that you think other web professionals should know? Um, I think, you know, learning how to really work with your client um, in the most effective way. I mean, businesses come in all shapes and sizes from knowledge, and, and, and that's the same. I mean, we have businesses that have absolutely no knowledge of what they're asking for in terms of, you know, this technology or this, you know, uh, industry to, you know, some that think they do and they're kind of savvy and you have to, I mean, you always have to go into, uh, any client communication, um, always just assuming that they're, they're not experts in it. And that's been difficult, you know, to always, cause, cause we know we're the experts, you know, we're the professionals. They're, they're hiring us for this, this job. And sometimes, you know, we forget that that we forget that aspect and we'll start talking about stuff that's just like they're not even, <laughs> and that's hard because then they'll lose interest and that's everything goes falls flat and that's been a hard thing to finally kind of hone in on and then you know perfect i mean of course there's no, nothing's ever perfect but improve that uh that delivery if that makes sense um it's that you know it's again the back to the relationship again um it's you got to kind of think of it as a relationship you know, in the beginning, I mean, the first meeting is kind of like your first date, <laughs> trying to get to know them and trying to go through that process and, you know, not saying the wrong thing. And it's just interesting how that's evolved where, you know, when we first started, we just would sit down and get down to business and start throwing stuff out. And I mean, it was not always effective. So, so a little foreplay is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That's the way to put it. So what, uh, what trends are you following right now in web? Um, you know, I think, uh, the biggest trend that we've that's just kind of hit our industry pretty hard recently is definitely the shifting to mobile. Um, it's been around, of course, for a while. I mean, but it's almost where, you know, when we're designing websites, where before, you know, you're designing the full website and the first focus is to make sure that it's operating and working well, you know, on your desktop. You know, of course, even saying that word almost sounds outdated. But um, this shift has happened so fast. I mean, it's amazingly fast. And then, of course, coming into 2013, uh, 2014, it's we have to almost change our mindset where now we have to build 
everything, you know, from you know, websites, applications, and that mindset that, you know, it's going to be viewed on a mobile platform or mobile device first. And that trend, I mean, if, you know, we had, I mean, we're all forced into it. I mean, if you're, in, if you're a web company and you're not following that trend right now, you're going to fall behind pretty quickly. Um, and that's been, you know, and that's been aggressive, that timeline, because, you know, there's other trends, you know, we've done that we've followed in the past, um, you know, even changing to certain content management systems, for example, like WordPress and that really exploding and becoming like that buzzword, um, like that kind of trend. But mobile is kind of, it's changing our, kind of our entire strategy, especially with user experience. Um, and, and it's just, again, I mean, it's been a challenge, but if we don't do it, we're going to be left behind. So sure. That's, I mean, that's, you said that, and that was like the first one that popped up. Yeah. And I think, you know, talking to various folks, mm -hmm. pretty much universally, everybody's following that trend yeah. is definitely keeping after that. Uh, in terms of what's next for Guzmo, like, what do you guys have planned? I mean, are you continuing to try to grow the business? Uh, are you just kind of keeping it where you are? Like, what are your yeah. big plans for the future? Yeah, definitely um, want to grow the business. Um, we want to improve, you know, keep improving our services. You know, we, we're, we're, we always, you know, don't think we're ever the best. So we want to keep, you know, making that. So, um, you know, improving, you know, existing services like SEO, search engine optimization, um, and, you know, researching and, and, you know, experiencing new technologies, you know, what's coming up and, and maybe injecting that into our service line. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, our goal is to keep growing, um, steadily, um, and, and improve our services overall. Um, and then, you know, even improve, even improve our own website. We're a website company. We're always thinking our website's out of date or we don't have time to do it. But um, that's, you know, that's in the works very near future. That's going through a whole new revamp. But yeah, we're just, yeah, continuing, you know, on a, I guess an upswing, I guess. Very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Tyson, we appreciate you hanging out with us today on New Gurus. Yeah. Uh, definitely welcome you back to the show sometime in the future. It'd be great awesome. to get an update. Awesome. That sounds good. Sounds All right. Good. Well, stay tuned for more great content from yougurus.com. Mm -hmm.